morning. Welcome to Coffee with Vern this morning, episode five. Cinco is, I is five. Wow, we've been doing this for a while now. This is great, isn't it? <sighs> the coffee's already brewed. I'm excited. Queen Sumatra, once again. I'm representing the one and only Greek god, Dansby Swanson, who is joining us this morning with Coffee with Vern, aren't you? Dansby has joined us. Uh, I may talk a little bit about Dansby Swanson and my love for him, and I really hope he, he stumbles across this video in his time of being away from baseball. I'm praying he does. Um, but we have a fun morning involved with Coffee with Vern. Um, heavy two questions. We're just, yeah, it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, this one, this one was dug deep. And so we're only gonna cover two. We're gonna cover some fun ones because we have taken a break away from some fun ones and we need to, so shall we? You know the routine. Let's get make sure the people can hear this real quick. Oh yeah. Oh man, the steam. Ah, there's two drinks that I believe are the nectar of God himself. Coffee. Three drinks, actually. Coffee. Baja Blast Mountain Dew. And a regular Monster Energy. No, I don't drink those if you're wondering. Don't freak out. Don't email me. Don't call me and tell me that you're going to have a heart disease from drinking Monster, okay? I don't want to hear it. Ah, but, yes, I do believe those are the nectar of the Lord sent to me. And so, shall we dive in this morning? Let's get started. It is time. So, uh, last week we covered uh, quite a bit. We talked about um, really one specific doctrine that we're gonna try to, I'm going to try to carry into this week as well. And that was perseverance of the saints, uh, understanding that in Christ um, we are secured. Uh, and that, that our salvation is promised and secured in Him. That it, once we are truly in Christ, it, it does, we don't lose our salvation, really. Uh, the, the Baptist phrase that you hear, a very Southern phrase that you hear with that is once saved, always saved, right? Um, the technical name given, brought about uh, from our early church fathers was perseverance of the saints. We talked about how R.C. Sproul calls it preservation of the saints, that they will be preserved to the end. Um, and the great truth of that, really, if you've been watching and keeping up, there is so much truth to the situation that we're in right now in that, right? That's where our hope is secured, is that Christ has secured our salvation and we have nothing to worry about. And so we're going to carry that to today. Uh, two questions in particular that tie into each other that have been asked. Um, and even if they, these are questions that haven't come across your mind, they may be some that can encourage you in this time. Uh, but we need some funny questions first, right? We need to get started with some funny ones. And so I've asked a few friends, I was like, man, what are some questions that, you know, you would, you, you want me to answer that are really out of the ordinary? And so, uh, we, well, the, the people have responded. And uh, the first one that I have to answer, because this is hilarious. What is one creature that you just don't understand why God created all right, I, there's many that I go, why, Lord? Why? Okay, I don't, you know, you said everything was good, and I just don't understand. But my perspective of good is not the same as his. So um, one in particular, always, when I used to go to the Columbia Riverbank Zoo, I was like, why? And it was one of my favorite exhibits. So I don't know if it's one of my favorites or if I just wonder why, um, is the baboon. What, Lord, why did you create an animal with a big old pink booty? I don't know. Uh, but the Riverbank Zoo always had them. I used to love watching them things run around. I don't know why. I'm, I'm going to dig myself a hole if I'm not careful. Uh, but, yeah, the baboon. Uh, my favorite animal is a koala. Cole, I love you, but I do love koalas. And so um, the koala bear is my favorite. The baboon, though, really, a pink hiney. Um, I, could, I could be so bad right now, but I'm not going to. We're going to keep going. So the baboon. All right. Next one um, is, <clears throat> uh, what is your favorite family tradition? I don't know. I hope every person in my family watches this. And if you haven't, shame on you. Every one of you need to watch this. Absolutely every fiber of you. Everyone. If you're a fifth cousin or a first cousin, or if you're part of my immediate family, you need to watch this. I just roasted them. Um, one of my favorite family traditions. 
Um, you know, we need to get back to this. We do. Uh, Christmas Eve is one of my favorite family traditions. We all get together at Granny's, um, and we usually eat chicken fingers. Uh, last year we had, I, I don't know if we had chicken nuggets or chicken fingers. One year we had chicken nuggets. They weren't done, and I was hurting on Christmas Day. Um, yeah, Chick-fil-A is not the chicken of the Lord. Bojangles is, by the way. Uh, and so, um, yeah, we were... It, Christmas Eve is one of my favorites. We always get together at my grandma's house, and uh, it's my mom's family, and so we always eat after church. Granny goes to church here, and so we have a good time. Uh, it's always a lot of chaos. I'm the only boy on that side until little baby Brody got brought into this world. I'm still the favorite. Brody, when you watch this one day, you haven't replaced me. Um, but it's a good time, so I'm the only boy, I'm the youngest, so I always get cooler presents than the girls. And I think they hate that because they always get like lotion and stuff that they need. And I'm always getting the cool stuff. So, yeah. So favorite family tradition that um, if I had to pick a second, I don't know. We just like to eat. So we eat a lot. So there you go. Uh, next, uh, what is a skill you would like to master? I don't know. I don't know. My dad's really good with carpentry. He's got all these saws and I really want to know how to use them. That's the immediate thing I think of. And then, um, what topic could you give a 40-minute presentation on with no preparation? And it can't be Romans 8, what the text says, besides Romans 8. That's unfair, because that's, um, duh. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, systematic theology, probably. I love systematic theology. I could explain systematic theology, like the works of it and how it works. I love it. Uh, and also the Reformation. I love that time. So, yes. All right, so now let's get into the fun stuff. I like those questions. Y'all should send me more of those because they're easy and they don't require lots of heavy thought and fear. Um, some of these give me fear. Uh, but first, a nice sip of Queen Sumatra. Let's see what we got here this morning. Oh, that's good. I haven't had any coffee this morning. Usually, I've had about three cups before we start this segment. And yeah, so this is my first cup. So this is good. This is real good. Um, we're going to have some fun. So the first two questions are, they're the only two we're going to cover this morning. Um, I, you know, just kind of looking, uh, first of all, I'm going to show the people um, if I can. Let me pull it up real quick. I want to show you all how much we've done. Uh, cause this, I mean, look at y'all, y'all have done some work, proud of y'all, um, proud of my kids, proud of my students. Let me zoom this in so you can see, uh, and we'll see if Jesse might be able to do something with this. The yellow is what we've answered so far, uh, and, uh, this is awesome. Green is what we're answering today, and then the red is what I'm saving for next week or in two weeks with my next special guest, that's why they're highlighted. Um, but the yellow is what we've done so far, so awesome. We need more. Send more. Um, but the two that we're covering today are really um, relevant right now, like in this situation of corona. Cor corona. Corona. Wow. Uh, my dad calls it corona. Dad, it's corona, okay? Um, but in this time of this pandemic and just all this stress and fear, anxiety, um, there's a lot of also depression. People are depressed. If you remember in history, the Great Depression in 1929, I believe that's the right date. If it's not, we'll flash it or something, but I'm pretty sure it's right. Um, October 29th, 1929, like you, it was the Great Depression of like economic situations, but also the depression of people uh, was relevant then. Um, and you see like right now, even the non-believer is heavily depressed, if not more depressed, right, um, of this situation. And it's a big issue. Uh, depression deals with two things, spiritual and physical. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. But the first question um, is, is it wrong for a Christian to be depressed? Um, and so I want to kind of take that question and move it around a little bit. But is it wrong for a Christian to be depressed? Uh, that is the question that I've received, and I'm going to reference some articles today as well because um, I like to give y'all some sources to turn to, um, but is it wrong for a Christian to be depressed? With that question, the question that comes to mind for me is, therefore, if it's wrong, that means they're implying, is it sinful for a Christian to be depressed, right? That would be the question that comes to my mind from that. Um, 
And I think, and if you differ and disagree on this, you can email me because I would like to, I want to talk about this. This is an area I'm not very well versed in and I've not done a lot of studying in. Um, and it's an area I think we learn more and more as time progresses, as studies progress of the brain, of the psyche, of just the, really the medical aspect. Um, but is it sinful for a Christian to be depressed? I don't believe so. I, I, I don't know if I would go as far as to say that depression is a sin, right? Um, and the reason why uh, is because of what is um, in the midst of depression. Like I said, spiritual and physical. Uh, physical referring to like a physical ailment um, or something that is causing someone to be uh, down and out, depressed, um, a lack of joy, lack of happiness. Spiritual maybe being like a guilt of a sin. Um, maybe it's the enemy oppressing you over things, right? We've talked about demons. Um, they're real. It's a real thing. Um, and, and oppression is real to the believer. I know for me, like when I think of spiritual depression, something that kind of depresses me and just hurts me is knowing I have friends that uh, worship other deities that are not deities, if that makes sense. Like I think of when I was in the Hindu temple, and I think I may have shared this, but just that feeling of watching people worship really the devil uh, really just depressed me and pained me. Um, my, my cardigan's shedding. Um, sorry. I can't, I have ADD, I think. Um, but that is a situ that, that's a situation that pained me and, and hurt me. Um, and like I said, this is an area I don't have a lot of well-versed in, uh, but I feel like it's something we need to talk about, right? Um, and it's somewhere that I have found myself even struggling at times, uh, especially in college. Um, I, I struggled in college with just being down and sad at times. Um, and I don't know, I wouldn't say that it was sinful uh, when I'd be down. And I mean, I was lonely, right? Uh, freshman year, I lost my best friend to stage four lung cancer, and I'm three hours away from my family, and I have no friends. I mean, that's lonely, right? And I, I, I didn't, it, is it sin that I'm in that situation, right? I didn't put myself in that situation necessarily. Um, and so I, it, just thinking of my own experience, um, but is it wrong for a Christian to be depressed I think we're all going to experience seasons uh, of uh, struggle, of uh, maybe downness, if you will, um, or depression, like light uh, instances of it. Right? When you lose a loved one, that's painful, right? We mourn. The Bible calls us to mourn with those who mourn. Um, right? It is not easy to lose someone you love. Um, in this situation, maybe if you've lost your job, you're you're in pain, you're frustrated, you're fearful, and maybe you are depressed because you're not working. Um, that situation though, did you bring it upon yourself? I don't think so, no. Um, and so is it wrong, is it sinful to be depressed in that? Um, I think when it becomes sinful is our actions out of that, what we do on the flip side, right? So in my depression, right, what do I do? Do I respond in anger? Um, and do I turn to, like, many people turn to, because guess what is at its peak of sales right now? Alcohol. Uh, do I turn to drunkenness? Um, or do I turn to chasing after lustful desires, right? Pleasure myself with financial things, money, things like that. Um, those kind of situations. It's really uh, when it becomes sinful is when we start seeking out other things that are outright sin. Um, Instead, in our depression as a believer, if we're struggling, if we're depressed in something, we should be turning to the Lord. Now, that's not easy, right? So don't think I'm saying it's easy. It's, it's not. When you're in a hole, it's hard to get out of that hole. But guess who's ready to reach out their arm to pull you out of that hole? And that is our Lord, right? Um, he has never forsaken you, and he will never forsake you. In Christ, that's that doctrine. In Christ, we are secured. He never walks out. He never walked out on his people in the Old Testament. He never walked out on the Israelites. When we study all of those situations, what the Israelites went through, he never walked out on them. Uh, he was sovereign and Lord over every single situation. And so uh, in your depression, believer, if you're struggling or if you're feeling uh, just seasons of um, just feeling low, uh, I, I urge you um, 
and pray that you would turn to the Lord in that and, and seek after him. Um, is it easy? No. Uh, I, w- I want to encourage you where to turn, though, in the scriptures. Um, Psalm f- the Psalms, Psalm 40, the, uh, Psalm 66, Psalm 6, uh, just passages that David felt anguish. I want to share a quick quote with you um, from this book. Someone uh, who I dearly respect, um, who's no longer with us, I look forward to meeting him one day, is Doc Martin Lloyd-Jones. Um, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones was a preacher in London, um, but he was a doctor, a medical doctor, before uh, he became a pastor. And so he used that to his advantage. There's a really good quote out there. He used to say that he, I, I don't know, so if you know it, <laughs> forgive me, but he used to reference like, you know, he had tended to the physical of people and now desired to tend to the spiritual. Um, and so let me see if I can't find this quote real quick. Um, but he speaks to this a lot. Um, and actually right here, does someone hold the view that as long as you are a Christian, it does not matter what the condition of your body is? And he's talking about how the physical and the spiritual work together in this. Um, well, you soon, or well, you will soon be disillusioned if you believe that. Physical conditions play their part in all this. There are certain physical ailments which tend to promote depression. Take that great preacher who preached in London for nearly 40 years in the last century, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. We all know who that is, right? One of the truly great preachers of all time. That great man was subject to spiritual depression. And the main explanation in his case was undoubtedly the fact that he suffered from gouty condition, which finally killed him. It was part of what? killed Charles Spurgeon in his 50s, I believe. He had to face this problem of spiritual depression often in a most acute form. A tendency to acute depression is an unfailing accompaniment of the gout which he inherited from his forebears. And there are many, I find, who come to talk to me about these matters, in whose case it seems quite clear to me that the cause of trouble is mainly physical. Into this group, speaking generally, you can put tiredness over strain, illness, any form of illness. You cannot isolate the spiritual from the physical, for we are body, mind, and spirit. The greatest and the best Christians, when they are physically weak, are more prone to an attack of spiritual depression than at any other time, and there are great illustrations of this in the scriptures. And then he gives some passages that talk about it. But what he's talking about is that they are tied in. And so you find people that struggle physically will struggle spiritually as well in that. Um, But the question, going back to our original question um, of uh, is it wrong for a Christian to be depressed? Um, I think it's wrong for us to desire to be depressed. And you know what I'm talking about if you've desired that, right? Um, Some people... um, and I, I mean, I'll throw myself out there. I've found myself in situations like this in college. Some people like living in that feeling, right? Um, the, the psyche of feeling in that feeling. Um, some people find pleasure out of feeling in a depressed mode. Uh, there is a term for that. Um, and we're not going to get into all the nitty gritty of that because uh, it's very, that's a dark road we'll go down maybe one day. Um, but it's wrong for us to desire to be in that. Um, but we should strive as believers if we are there, right? Because there's going to be seasons, right? In and out of seasons our whole life. We're going to have times of joy and we're going to be in the valleys for a time. We're going to be on the mountaintops and then the valleys, right? But as the Puritan prayer says, in the valley is where I find my vision. Uh, when we're in our lowest, we should strive to seek for the Lord. And if you don't know where to, and you're like, James, that's easier said than done. Absolutely it is. I know. I've been there, right? Um, but I'm, I turn to the Psalms, and I cry out to the Lord. And there's something sweet about a humble cry and someone who uh, is in pain crying out to the Lord. There's something sweet about it. And so I invite you to just get on your knees, lay before the Lord, and let it all out before him. Um, if you're struggling. Great book you can pick up as well as John Piper, When the Darkness Will Not Lift. Easy, easy read. Uh, about 75 pages. Really good book. Encourage you to check it out. The next question, and this is where we'll kind of finish off this morning because it's just so heavy, um, is what can a Christian do when they are sad and depressed and how will they study the Bible or where should they go? Um, maybe is the better question. Um, and so th- I kind of answered that um, but what can a Christian do when they're sad and depressed? I think we need to uh, humble ourselves, put our pride aside, humble ourselves, and lay before the Lord. 
um, and just cry out in our anguish, in our weakness, right? So whatever it is, um, and I mean, I could list off a list right here of what may be causing um, whatever it may be. I would invite you to just go before the Lord in humility and say, God, um, this situation, you know the outcome, right? It's in your hands. I have no idea the outcome, but I am hurting and I need you to speak peace over me. Um, I believe that the Lord has a peace that surpasses all other understanding. Paul tells us that in the New Testament. Um, and I, that I've experienced that peace. I know what that peace is like. Um, and just to kind of get vulnerable with it, I'll share a quick story to end. Um, let me get a sip of coffee before I do. Lord, anytime I get vulnerable, I need coffee. Lord, have mercy. Man, that's good. Wow. Um, but when I was in college, so just to kind of go back, um, some of my students know my story. Not a lot of you may not know it at all, but... Um, College was tough, right? So a lot, for a lot of people, four years of college is the best four years of their life. Um, I had horrible four years of high school, then I went into a horrible four years of college. Um, the Lord grew me spiritually the most in college, and I think it's because of the pains that I went through and the valleys where I find my vision, right? Um, and I, I found a lot of vision in those valleys. Freshman year, four weeks. Uh, well, the week before I go away to school, find out my best friend, my grandfather, uh, is diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. Four weeks after I go to school, he's gone, just like that, Labor Day weekend. Um, scariest thing I've ever watched. Um, and that's why I have such a burden to pray for those that have cancer all the time. It just, my heart hurts for those because um, I've watched it. And so I uh, went away to school, had no friends, actually didn't know one person on campus. Later, come to find out, my friend uh, from Augusta, there was one there. Um, met my best friend, Strib. Uh, that first week, uh, that's a fun story. We met over a Mountain Dew and Pop-Tarts. Uh, still this day, my best friend. I love him to death, ride or die. Uh, but um, throughout those four years, there were so many different highs and lows. Um, there was the desire to be here uh, while there was the desire to be there. Um, I was in and out of relationships in high school and then carried that into my freshman year of college. Um, and just the emotional toll that that has on a man uh, when you're away and you desire to be with someone you care about at home. Um, and then uh, just losing someone you love and the way that went out. Um, and then it's just it, the reality because I never lost somebody I loved like that and just gone. Um, I, I was always seeking to fill my um, pain with other things. Uh, maybe a friend, maybe a relationship, um, and, and it wasn't the right route, right? Um, and so, uh, but um, through the guidance of true mentors, true believers who poured into me, um, I was able to find my way out of those holes, and it was by two things. Um, one of them was daily going before the Lord and, and reading His Word every morning, daily, uh, my roommates knew my routine. 6.30 in the morning, I'm up, coffee's made. I had a ke uh, Keurig there. I hated it uh, now. I hate Keurigs now is what I meant. Back then, I loved it. French roast, uh, Starbucks, pff, bomb. Um, but I uh, had it ready at 6.30, and I was reading with a candle lit. I forgot my candle today. Dang it. Um, but I was reading with my candle 6.30 in the morning. And then I'd go to class, I had 8 a.m.s always, and so I'd leave for class 7.45, it was awful. 8 a.m.s suck, why would they do that to Christian studies majors who are up all night? Well, I was up all night um, writing papers. But uh, I would go to class and that would help my day. And then I had guys who were constantly on me, if that makes sense, constantly, hey, where are you reading at? Hey, how's your prayer life? Um, how's your spiritual walk? How's your relationship? Um, how's your family? Like asking questions and then asking the hard ones, right? You know which ones I'm talking about that you don't want to answer. Uh, but accountability. And so I think here's how we as believers, when we are sad and depressed and just in pain, how we get out of it. I think first of all, our first thing is we, we go before the Lord in humility. Seek his word. Start in the Psalms. I encourage you, if you're there right now, start in the Psalms and read through them. Study them, pray them. Second thing I encourage you to do um, is to find a routine of prayer daily. 
and, and maybe it's a journal and you jot that out and you put your pains in that journal, right? And the third thing I encourage you to do, and from the youngest to the oldest, I encourage you to do this, seek out somebody that can hold you accountable or seek out somebody that will pour into you daily. Um, and and I'm, I'm willing to help in that. We all, that's our desire. But seek out those who are gonna call you um, out on sin, uh, who are going to encourage you to pray, who are going to encourage you daily uh, in the Word. They're going to send you Bible verses randomly. Or maybe they're just going to call you to say, hey, I just wanted to check in on you. Right? I've got friends that do that weekly. I have a phone call every week with Strib, still to this day. See, the Lord gave me that friend, uh, and still to this day, he's my accountability. He's my brother, um, and I take a bullet for him, and he calls me every week. And so you need people like that, and so I encourage you to seek those out. Um, but that's where I would go. And how you study the Bible, how would they study the Bible? You start in the Psalms and you keep digging. When you're done there, maybe go back if you need more. Uh, but seek out, read Lamentations. Read some of the Old Testament cries and prayers of the people of God. Um, but don't stop. Don't stop. Don't let the enemy tell you that, nope, you can dwell here. You're good right here. No, don't listen to that. Uh, reach out for the Lord's hand if you're in that hole and let him pull you out. Because he hasn't walked away if you're in his name. Let me tell you, he's right there. So, um, I love y'all. This has been good. This is a tough one. Uh, but we need these in our life, right? And so, uh, until next week when we cover some more tough ones, um, I, we'll have a special guest here soon. I'm excited about that. Uh, until next time, go watch some highlights of Dansby Swanson. I mean, have you seen that man move at shortstop? God, he's a Greek god. Dance with Swanson, I love you, and I hope that one day you watch this. Because I want to meet you. I partially want to touch your flowing hair. And I want to throw a baseball with you. Have a good one, folks. Till next time.